All right. There's Justin. Uh, I'm going to enable live transcriptions. Hi, Justin. Hey, hey. Good morning. Good morning. And let's see, I will put the minutes back in the chat for you. I'm glad you're here. I've tried been I've been responding to your social posts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just did the just did the rounds on the on the blog post just now. I saw. So thank you for doing that. Um, all right. Well, I'll share my screen. Let's see. Here we go. And today, it's a, I think it's a fairly light agenda. Justin, I know there are a variety of things that you were looking to talk about today. Um, and we've been chatting a little bit, so we can bring those up. I would like to take a and Justin, you can also just kind of stop me too, as I guess if we're looking at issues and PRs and you think that these things kind of align with what you've been doing, just go ahead and, you know, chime in. Cool. So issues. Um, well, I think Justin, you can comment right away because I see a bunch of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I probably should have mentioned the the labels before I did them, but maybe I can just walk through some of the the triage that I did over yeah, the last couple helpful. of days. Yep, thank you. Um, or if you want, maybe I could just share my screen really quick and just kind of run through it too. You bet. Let me stop share and then I'll make you a co-host and then we'll be good. Perfect. Um, okay, you're all good. Now. Uh, so let's try. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So I'll walk through the the labeling system that I that I set up here, um, and then look at the project board after that. Um, so I adapted this labeling system that I've used in other open source projects to try to make it easier to both filter and also just at a glance understand what all the different issues are and um, what kind of work that they're focused in. So if you go to the, you know, the issues tab, go to the labels, you'll see here um, I added a, some that I just updated and some that I've added in. I have a, a prefix system. I don't know if this is overcomplicating, so I'm really going to appreciate your feedback on here. Um, but so I have split these up into a couple different statuses. So there's these ones that begin, actually, I think I have this written somewhere. So maybe I can just walk through how I've uh, done it. No, label conventions, that's it. Yeah, so the, the ones that begin, we don't have that, but the ones that begin with an I, these are what I call inclusion labels. So they're focused on trying to make it easier to bring people in or, or give people a chance to get involved. Help wanted and good first issue aren't anything new. Um, those have been around already. But I added one around contributor experience. So if we have an issue or something that's focused on how people actually engage and interact with our working group, that's what this one is more focused on. So thinking of things like the issue templates, um, and I can probably even look at all the issues that are tagged that way now. Yeah, so like the issue templates, um, we were talking about the inclusive naming checklist and then the repository cleanup. Um, so I figured those kind of fit into that bucket of inclusion work for the contributor experience. Um, so that's what all these ones that are prefixed with the I mean. The ones that are prefixed with a T indicates the different type that they are. So for these, I just have three. Um, maybe the bug one isn't as applicable for what we're doing since we're not doing a ton of software work, but I've found having this improvement or a new change uh, label can be helpful in understanding like, is this a new idea? Is this something that's a completely, you know, hasn't been done or hasn't been talked about before? You can kind of flag things that way as like, this is a something that we're adding in, it's a new idea, or is it an improvement? Is it is it working on something that already exists? Like, is it improving a metric we've already created versus creating a new one? Um, so just kind of giving a quick rep, a quick visual representation about whether this is introducing new work into the project or we're, we're revisiting older uh, or something that already is in our repository. Um, so that's what the T is for type. 
Um, and then I have this X, X just for close status. So if you're closing an issue or a pull request, you can just, um, for historical purposes, you can just assign it one of these issues that has an X on it, whether it's a duplicate or it's invalid, or we're, we decided we're not gonna work on it. Um, so just only, only, these are really only useful if you're closing something out as incomplete, just to give some context of why this was being closed if we aren't working on it. Um, so it's a quick visual there. And then so there's those, um, the X's are just label and then close, basically. That would be yeah. a workflow for those. That's what I'm thinking. Yes. That's right. Okay. okay. And, and thank you. last and finally are these question mark ones, which I try to mean is that you require some kind of more information and might need someone who's a little more experienced to move that uh, issue forward. So here, there's a blocked, I added a blocked one. So if we're stuck on something or we're, we're waiting on someone else or another working group, we can just quickly label that as blocked. So we know that it's kind of frozen for a little bit. Um, the question one, that was actually already here. I just added the prefix. You know, if we have something, we need more information from somebody or there's a question that needs to be answered, a quick way to flag it. And this needs triage one, uh, we won't be doing as much with it, but on those issue templates that I that I proposed in the pull request, um, whenever someone will create an issue from those issue templates, it'll automatically give it the needs needs triage. So it'll be kind of a helpful reminder that when someone opens a new issue, just to make sure that we go through and make sure that it's 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 up to date, or if we need to do any replying or or changing the labels, that we can we can do that. Um, I think so that's for the all of the templates. In that scenario, yeah. would the need triage label be removed when somebody has taken a look at it? Yeah, so as soon as it's been reviewed by a human, you can just drop the label if it, okay. if it looks right. So the idea is it's just a reminder that, hey, someone needs to look at this really quick and just um, either do a reply or update the metadata, whatever okay. it is. Or just make sure the issue makes sense to the working group, okay. Exactly, exactly. So that was a little bit on the, the labeling system. Um, one the question. other piece. Can I have, yeah. uh, make two comments? So one, I put it in the chat. I like new idea for new change as a name. The new change label that you had. Gotcha. So changing that mm -hmm. to new idea, that yep. would be hard. New idea. Yep. Um, I do. I really like the the prefixes. So I think that's nice. Um, and then is there any way that we could take what you were showing from the was it the UNICEF site in terms of what the prefixes are? <clears throat> like that the label convention text and get it into the repository somehow? Yeah, I could just actually, uh, in retrospect, I probably should have added that into a, <laughs> a pull request, add some documentation there. Okay. Um, but yeah, I could put this into the README, just add it somewhere. Um, like, or I don't think we have like explicit uh, contribution guidelines, do we? Oh, we do. Okay, I could put them in here as a like a, a, the label conventions piece. That would make sense. Because then we can, and actually you can do it. Uh, yeah, is that contributing? Is that, this is broad. It's not specific to DEI, is it? It doesn't <clears throat> quite doesn't, look so. I mean, what we should so. prop, just from a maintenance perspective, <laughs> is we should probably move the contributing. We can bring this up in the community call and you could add it here still, but like move the contributing document to our community repo. Because right now- like a cross link, mm -hmm. right? Yep, yeah. because right now all of our, I'm guessing the way it's set up is we have- <laughs> X number of contributing docs across the org that are all the same. 
to that end, um, a feature that I recently discovered that uh, GitHub can offer is... Is that me? No. Okay. Uh, where was this team? So you can have a dot GitHub repository in an organization. Uh, no, this isn't the one. Uh, you mean the dot GitHub folder where you keep the templates? Well, yeah. So oh, I didn't oh, know. Oh, GitHub repository, then all the org could share all the same templates. Is what you're saying? Yeah. So it'll actually. Here we go. I didn't realize that. If I go and look in here, there's a con contribution yeah, guideline. Like that. And this gets reflected across all the re repositories, unless they're added or unless they override um, the ones that are in this dot GitHub folder. So, like, if I go to another repo uh, for any of this, it's like a hot agency. They just have CI uh, pieces here. They don't have contract oh, They do have. So you can you can have a default across the whole org, and then any individual repo that might need to can override one of the templates. You got it exactly. That's beautiful. That, that's beautiful. I had no idea that existed. I didn't either. So it was <laughs> it was a cool little uh, feature for me to discover too. I'm just trying to look at one of their old repos just mm. to uh, see if like if I go and. Could save us a ton one. of work in, in terms of like things like metric templates. Yeah, so we could have metric templates. We could have the contributing. We could have the code of conduct. Yeah, just all of those repeated docs. Yes. Yep. So like you'll see here, this is a literally just an empty repository. There's nothing here. But if I go to open an issue, it says, "Hey, there's <coughs> contributing guidelines, and we have a code of conduct." And you can see if you look in the bottom left corner there, or if I click it, it'll take me to the .github folder. And here we are. So that could be one way that we approach that as well, just thinking about um, keeping things mm -hmm. dry or not repeating ourselves too much. That could be one way that we approach that. So that's, yeah, that's excellent actually. And that solves the problem. So then maybe yeah, coming back to the, the label conventions, would it be better than if I just put this in the readme, if we wanna deprecate the repo specific contribution guidelines? Um, why don't we, can you just copy and paste this and put it in the notes for a second? Because then yes. what I can do is start taking on the, this dot GitHub thing. Yeah, right there. Yeah, that doesn't need to be bold. <clears throat> component we don't have, but the rest we do. Okay. Yeah, so, so I'll work on this is good. Whatever makes the most sense here, if we want to make it in the generic one, or um, just let me know if you want me to add this into the README or something too. I'd be happy to do a quick okay. pull request for I, that. I have a question for you on this dot GitHub, and you may or may not know the answer, but if if I add the dot GitHub folder and I add the just the contributing markdown, the contributing MD to that folder or to that repo, um, mm -hmm. is there anything that the other repositories need to do to recognize that? I I don't think so. I think it okay. will just happen by default. You know, just like I went and looked at this blank repo that was. Mm -hmm. Probably created a long time. Well, yeah, if I look at the history, this repo was created after this one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it just picked it up when I go to when I went to open an issue. It was just okay, right there. So but I then think that it repo, should just be automatic. But if you go to code in this repo, <clears throat> the code tab, it doesn't, the markdown doesn't necessarily show up here. You know how, like in the DEI working group, we have a contributing.md that shows up in that top level. <clears throat> I do. So if you have the, if you have something in here, you'll see that there's a code of conduct that gets linked, and again, okay. that'll go to the the dot GitHub. I'm trying to think if there's other places that GitHub sprinkles in that contribution guidelines piece because I know it'll mm -hmm. prompt you just like when you go to open an issue or a pull request, it'll tell yeah. you about that. But um, I'm not sure on the repo homepage if it shows okay. it. 
but you could just put a link in the README too. Like that's what I've done with a lot of projects is in your README say, hey, we have contribution right. guidelines. Go it's here. To find yeah. It. yeah. It just may have, it's going to make life so much easier for so many things. Yes. And I can certainly same. I can do the latter mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure. If, if it doesn't pick it up the way that I want it to pick it up. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that tip. Hmm. GitHub yeah, is like is every cool every one. week I like learn something about GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a new one for me too. Actually, I had someone show me that one. So uh, I had no idea that was even a feature until recently. And oh, and to the same end, you can also have the readme that you put in there. Do you want to have a little profile for the, the GitHub organization? Again, same thing. Um, you just put a readme in that dot GitHub folder and it'll pop up right at the top of your, your GitHub org. Interesting. All right, cool. I'm going to play with this a little bit before, probably before the community <clears throat> call, because this is something that would obviously have an impact. Do, do you have a, another GitHub org you can play with? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Because like, yeah, I just, I just went to um, one of mine and did it and it just put up this magical, this is a unique special repository that you can do all of these things with. So I, I think it's going to be as straightforward as Justin describes. Right on. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so then. Uh... So the only other thing I was just going to walk through was the, the project board, which was the second piece. <coughs> of the well, can I have one more question on the issue labels? Yeah, go for it. Um, Okay, so I like these labels. And how is the easiest way to kind of propagate this to the other working groups, just simply manually go into those working groups and follow the approach that you used in DEI? If there is buy-in and people are aware that like this is something we wanna try doing, there's another feature you can try in the organization uh, settings here. If I can remember where it is, I think, because yes, repository labels. So, okay, well, <laughs> maybe not the desired effect, but if you're creating a new repository, you can have default okay. labels that get picked up and we'll do that. But in terms of these older ones, we probably have to have someone go in and manually create the labels and do that I'm for each. I'm one. okay with that. And in fact, I, I kind of prefer that in this case because we have the, as you pointed out, like with the label of bug, like we have the working groups that work on the design of metrics. And then we have the software groups that focus obviously on the development of software. And I wouldn't want to assume that, say, the folks that are working on Grimoire Lab or Augur would necessarily benefit from this label approach. <clears throat> I don't think, I mean, it, I think it could benefit us. I don't think we, I don't feel like it would be tragic, especially like to have those labels available as choices. Okay. Uh, for the context, I use them in a software project for the most part. Like that's okay. why even I yeah. have these, these extra ones, which were components, which is more yeah. of the software piece, but I use all the others uh, just the same. And the but issue I think the big thing is just making sure you have buy-in from yeah. the teams. And okay. the issue template using and putting the triage flag on there right away, that's like, why didn't anybody think of that before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one that I, I found that one to be really helpful, especially when you have a lot of those issues coming in. It just gives you that reminder as like, Hey, has someone actually uh, looked at this already? Or uh, it's a help can be a helpful reminder there. I found so. Okay, cool. Thank you, Justin. All right. So now the next thing. Sorry, I had so many questions. No, all, all good. So this, yeah, the last piece here, just pretty quick. So we already had the project board. It was it was D and I issues. I just um, renamed it to project or working group project board. And I, I restructured things a little bit. So now we have the metric ideas column, which was already there. Um, but I, I went through all of our issues and then I added all of the metric idea um, 
issues into this column. So we have, look at, we have 12 issues that, that are on the table for metric ideas. Um, and then I saw like six different things. So I made a new column for things that are more just working group tasks or just general to do's that we should keep up with or look at. Um, so that I found six different issues that seem to fit into that one. And then um, there's some automation in place. So when there's a pull request that gets opened, it automatically goes into this in progress column. And when an issue or pull request gets closed, it'll be moved into this completed column. Um, so it helps keep things tidy and will help out with some of the triage work. So if someone doesn't have to always uh, move things from in progress to completed, we just have to do that for issues, I guess. When an issue is like, if we want to show it as in progress, you just have to drag it over and drop it there. Um, or alternatively, gotcha. another thing that's kind of an easier uh, way to do it is if you're looking at the issue directly and you have the project board tagged, you can also just click on this little drop down and boom, you can choose any of the columns that you wanna put that, that GitHub issue into. That's cool. So that's another kind of shortcut of how to do that too. So would, um, can you go back to the project <clears throat> board? One of the things that I see in this is, do you know how we start a lot of our meetings with let's go take a look at issues and PRs? Yep. The, this could be a different entry into that. That is what I was thinking too. Okay. It's kind of like a, especially if we wanted to like really do a deep dive on metrics, then mm -hmm. hey, here's all our metrics. Um, or if we have one that's in progress that we want to follow up on, easy to see. Right. Same with the, the different tasks. So that, that was my thinking too, is that this might be a better entry point for kind of driving the working group discussion around mm -hmm. the, the issues. Right. So like when we return to issues, the way that we historically have returned to issues or PRs, this would enable us to say, listen, in this meeting, we're not going to be looking at metric ideas. So we just don't even care about that column. What we need to do is kind of address our to do's that are outstanding. Right. Okay. And another cool thing is if you want to say, hey, what are all the ones that are just improvements? You can do filters with by, by the labels too. Okay. Um, so another kind of easy way, if you wanted to do quick triage, you can sort things just by clicking on the, the label. Cool, that's super cool. Um, I will probably bring this up also as a, <clears throat> the way to think about work in the the different at least for this part for the different metrics working yeah groups. for sure i mean i think we yeah. can bring up the general it, meeting I, I would just do it i guess after i would bring up the general meeting and maybe just do it yeah this actually, might I mean, be this happy to show up to I, I might be able to make one of those meetings too and i could just kind of walk through it there that would be helpful yeah, that probably would be helpful um it's that tuesday meeting you know the one i'm talking about tuesday at 11 a.m u.s central <laughs> yeah figure out you're sharing your screen uh, yeah <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah i noticed you're, you have different time zone translations at the bottom of your screen yeah that too <laughs> I, I have to do a lot of that time zone math so um yeah so that should work for for next week on the 8th i, I should be able to drop right in there for, okay. for 6 p.m um, well the nice thing about this is it doesn't change the work do you want to stop sharing your screen yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i just i don't never want people to show things they don't want to show on a recording yeah. that's all yeah, oh right. yeah, yeah. yeah this is recorded too <laughs> that's yeah, all yeah no, it's, uh, yeah we just all good. I don't think uh, I'll. I don't think I'll have a any major risk for that one week. <laughs> well, no yeah. problem. Elizabeth will appreciate you've got five large on the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like this because it doesn't change the workflow. It just organizes the work. Yes. Even just a yeah. Bit well, it's it just makes it so that every group doesn't have to edit the same thing. Right. Um, so okay. It's huge. Justin, we could have one more thing for you. Do you want to talk about your issue templates? Yes. Um, 
So I saw your comment there and I'll just drop the link here in the chat yeah. for reference for the pull request. Um, so yeah, so we talked about this last week. So this is the, the implementation. Mm -hmm. So I just put two issue templates together. So whenever someone goes to open a new issue on the repo, um, they would see, they'd be presented with two options. They could either propose a new metric or basically anything that's not a metric. Um, so the metric one is, I really looked at the, the template, the, the markdown template that we have for new metrics as a reference to try to frame like what kinds of things can we ask people up front that might make it easier uh, for the working group to review when we go and actually look at the metric. And it also, like I tried to prompt the, the person who's opening the issue about, hey, is this something you'd actually like to try to drive? Or would you like to help lead on the, the drafting of this metric? <laughs> or would you rather it just be discussed by the working group if you don't have that time? Um, so I thought that would be something a little more helpful when someone comes with an idea that will help us kind of discuss it and work through it and figure out next steps for, for working on the metric. And then the other template is one that um, it's, it's based on like a more of a personal uh, way that I, I, I frame issues. It's with this SBDO framework. So it's that stands for summary, background, details, and outcome. So it's just a, a kind of an easier way to frame uh, like, so the summary, you know, what's one sentence, describe in one sentence what this task or idea is. The background, like what do we need to understand for this to make sense or why this should be done? details of you know what would this actually look like what does the work actually look like to this do you have any ideas or what would the next steps be and then outcome what's one sent describe in one sentence the impact of completing this work or this task what does that do um so i've had that as a really helpful way for me to try to frame like new work requests and tasks but um i i disabled blank issues which might be a controversial one so one that might be helpful to discuss here is if we want to keep the option open for someone just to have a no template issue. So there's um, a total blank slate for them. Of course, you can always just copy paste, you know, or like control A, delete the template. Too. Um, but those are the two, the two templates that I put together to think that might help for us when we go to the issue tracker. It's just a way to help organize the feedback and kind of structure it a little bit more. Um, but definitely curious to get your feedback. Oh, and to your comment, Matt, just I'll share here. Um, we could look at creating a template for all the working groups, and maybe that could fit into this .github folder as well, um, that a yes. working group could just take that and, and copy it into their own repo. Because I, I, I don't know if that would get picked up at the, re like if you added issue templates into the .github folder, I, I don't know if that would gotcha. like, trickle down. Yeah, um, that was my question. Or it, yeah. I didn't, it, it wasn't the dot get couple folder was not part of my question because I didn't know it existed when I asked the question. But um, yes, so I let's see, I think there are two things. One is this is the template for the new metric, all good there. And then this is the metric for basically not. Or, I'm sorry, this is the template for not a new metric. And the question was whether or not we needed a template, so to speak, for just a completely blank issue. And it's quite possible that I, it seems like this could work just fine for the blank issue. Is that kind of your thought? Yeah, and you know, I, we gotta always try it out and add it on, and then if it ends up feeling like it's more cumbersome or if it's not working, we could always drop it or revise it. My um, my thinking is if you not. if you don't offer the option of a blank issue, then you won't get as many. People are smart enough to know they can delete a template, um, but if you make if you make them pick a template, then I think we'll get more structured issues that are easier to process. Probably. I, don't anybody, I don't think anybody's going to not create an issue because they have to pick a template, no, you know, knowing full well, or at least 
and as soon as they get into the template, they'll realize they can delete everything. It's not like it isn't obvious. Yeah, or like they can just put in a for yeah for yeah details. Just I, it's, I don't have any any details at this point. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Okay. And someone could totally say like, I have no idea what a next step would be. You know. And yeah. That's, right. That's, that's okay. a totally fine answer. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like this. So then, yes. My question, Justin, was with respect to right now we have the we have this, which is where we keep like our do um, you know when we're releasing a metric, we have that quality checklist. We have the metrics model template and the metrics template. And then we also have this, which to me clearly needs to be <laughs> brought together. We shouldn't have two template folders <laughs> distributed across <laughs> different repositories, different right. issues. But um, the question was, is could we, and I think you were kind of getting at this, like address wherever it went, these, like could we put these in one place, and maybe that place is the dot GitHub folder <laughs> at this point. It would be interesting to experiment if that gets trickled down. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't tried that. If that would get picked up by other projects, if you just put those in place in the dot GitHub repo. Okay. Um, but I mean, in terms of general applicability, I think. I mean, maybe I'm biased here, but you know, I think it would be helpful. <laughs> um, I, I really, I really use this in like every issue. You probably notice even other things I've opened that if you go and look at all those issues, I always follow this this format for how I right. open my issues. Um, so I, I think it's a really helpful way just to structure your thoughts and kind of get your key, your your main idea across. But mm -hmm. um, maybe it could be a topic for the community meeting as well, kind of tying it into that dot GitHub mm -hmm. repo discussion too. Is kind of like what do people think about this? <coughs> So let me Maybe I can drive that. Okay, yeah, cool. Ahead. Let me take on just an action item and I'll just play around with the logistics of this. Um, I may um, I'm trying to think if should I just merge this PR? Like there's no harm in doing that and having this in the DEI working group. What do people think about that? <clears throat> Merge the PR into the DI working group and handle the dot GitHub or repository later. He, well, yeah, and kind of just we can like this yeah, can that's at least... yeah, that doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't no, hurt anything. if it ends up that we it works just <clears throat> fine out of the dot GitHub repository, we can just delete these documents out of. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because you can ultimately overwrite them anyway. And yeah. and you, you would just undo that. You would like delete them if everything worked out at the org yep, level, exactly. which yep, I imagine exactly. it will. Okay, um, I'll do that. And like I said, I'll give you a thing you actually point to if you want to demo it, you can show people what it will look like too. Yes, that's actually a good idea. So I'm going to take on an action item. Um, <coughs> I'm going to explore all the templates as possibly. Oops. And what number was this? Three, this one. No, nope. what number is three ninety seven for the templates? Yeah. Oh, the, the PR is uh three ninety eight. <laughs> Just okay. off by one. Three ninety eight to Let's <coughs> okay. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you immensely, Justin, for this really great work and ways to think about how to better do our work. Yeah, this is yours online. <laughs> I mean, the, I hope it'd be cool if this gets a starts a project or a chaos wide conversation on this too, because I know that seems to be like a 
a sticky point a lot of times with the GitHub triage and management. So hopefully this so, can be used. Yeah, I think it can. So we'll actually tomorrow, and you don't need, that's totally cool to, I can talk about this in the common working group. So in common, we've modified that working group just a little bit to work on metrics that are just that kind of common across all working groups but also we the common working group is starting to take on initiatives that have an impact across the entire project or at least large mm -hmm. sections of the project so, so i'll bring this up metrics, there as well yeah. yeah not just metrics um so as another example like the metrics release process is now something we would talk about in common just because it has an impact for everybody so fewer meetings more efficiency in our meetings and I'll, I'll bring this up there as well so awesome right. yeah that sounds great uh, good thank you very much Justin this was incredibly helpful <clears throat> all Any right problem? um let's see I, Elizabeth I'm gonna not talk to those um we're, we have 10 minutes left I guess we have some metric updates that we are doing. Um, I'll bring this up. So just so folks know that we have metrics that we have released in prior years, really. Yeah. And uh, one of the, the asks is that we not like look at we look at every metric every release cycle but that we look at a few of the metrics every now and then uh and think about how how what we've learned over the last couple of years kind of impacts how we read this metric it's like i think i told you it's like reading an academic paper that you wrote like five years ago and you're, you're like oh <laughs> or my or my dissertation which occasionally i take out to remind me how bad i used to write <laughs> <laughs> But there's always ways to improve these metrics. And so as part of these release cycles, we can kind of review the metrics. And I, I do think that the code of conduct for a project metric has been reviewed fairly extensively and kind of ready for a re-release. Um, so maybe I'll put this on the agenda for next week, but it would be great if we could spend maybe five minutes just kind of giving it one last pass. And we can, again, do this in the DEI working group call next week. Uh, just to everybody, you know, we just kind of stop the meeting and everybody takes a look at the metric. And if we're good to go, then we'll start the process of, of getting it uh, uh, re -release, retranslated and re-released as part of the upcoming release process. So mm -hmm. that's what that is. Um, I don't think we're going to have time right now to take. Oh, I did also, you know, another one that we're going to take a look at is code of conduct for events. Um, so we do have a, a Google Doc set up for that now, so we can begin the same process, but again, we can wait on that. Um, the one thing that I maybe wanted to talk about in the just the few minutes that we have remaining is, um, and I, I wish Elizabeth was here, but I, I'd love to get anybody's feedback, is, is how can we best, newcomers to the project, how can we, like, you know, best keep track of, of newcomers to the project and work to help align the interests of, of the newcomers or the new members with what we're doing in the project. So I know that joining an open source community can be challenging sometimes because there are people who've been in the community for a long time. They understand how work gets done. So I don't know if people have thoughts about how we can best do this because I, I think this is an inclusion issue that it'd be great to talk about in the DEI working group. As an example, so like we go through the Google Summer of Code process and like what would be mechanisms that we could do or practices that we could implement in the chaos project to to try to help ensure that that the participants in Google Summer of Code stay after yeah. the welcome to stay and can make <clears throat> contributions. So I'm open to any thoughts. Or just, this is just kind of a great. <coughs> so I know the office hours, I haven't checked how those have been going, but I think an active meeting where they feel the need or they have to or can show up every week 
just to get like a brief rundown of maybe what the other groups are working on or just um, progress on the different projects that might help them feel more involved and just help better explain what's going on. Gotcha. That's good. I do know that uh, Ruth and Elizabeth did office hours this Monday, I think. And I think there was pretty good, maybe five or six people. I feel like it was Tuesday, it was Tuesday because Tuesday. I okay. can't go to those because I teach. Okay. Can I say something? <clears throat> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure um, when you're talking about the newcomers, actually I was one of them, so I thought I I could <laughs> I could have an input. Um, yesterday there was a session that was handled by Ruth and Elizabeth, and it was really good because it was my one of my first sessions, and I deliberately um, chose to be attending all of these meetings so that I can follow up and know where exactly I could make um, impact and contribution. So, <coughs> I think um, the previous, I don't know who spoke last um, when she talked about having um, the newcomers engaging all the working group sessions to really know what they're working on and how best they can fit is really a good initiative because actually that's what I'm doing right now. I came into this, I don't know what actually is going on too much, but at least I know what DEI does and what it means. And so since yesterday and up to now, there is really too much difference of now my overview of the whole chaos community and what the different working groups do. So I think Ruth and um, Elizabeth are doing a good job in the onboarding um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to make that submission because I'm a newcomer and I wanted to just speak about the impact I'm already having into the initiative I'm putting up to see that um, I get to know better. Great. So it sounds like the the Zoom session is well received. Yes, it is great to have you here, Enoch. Um, can, I, can I ask another question? Do you say Enoch? Is that how you say your name? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Enoch, it's okay. So, Enoch, I, I think you're also on Slack. Is that right? Yeah, sure. I'm there. Is there anything in Slack that would be helpful as um, well? I've not seen too much activity in Slack, actually. Um, for the previous times I've joined, I tried to scroll through the previous messages. You find um, a channel had um, the last messages in December 18th, and you're like, ah, oh, this doesn't look like an active channel. And um, I don't think... Um, I'll get any response here. So um, most of those channels that have previously joined, um, they do not look like they have a lot of activity going on in there. So that's why actually I just opted to be attending um, these um, um, working group meetings because um, I know I can get firsthand interaction and information. <clears throat> I was just biased because the latest um, messages in some of those channels were really too way, way back in last year. I, I am doing, to that point, I am trying to go through Slack pretty actively right now to ask mm -hmm. to either archive channels that aren't doing much. <laughs> There's not much conversation. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether um, the channels you're in are the ones I'm in, but I'm sure we should share channels and you must have seen me somewhere. That's why you asked so. But um, yeah. yeah, I think you can validate that if you're scrolling through Slack at the moment. Okay. Uh, that's a good tip. And I think that's a good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Because I think one of the concerns that we have is that in the chaos organization, we might have 20 Slack channels and it's hard for a newcomer to know which one to participate in and ask questions. Yeah, sure, okay. but, but, but I think why you have less activities in, in Slack is um, of course for yesterday and today for the sessions I've attended, I see you get more updates um, in the Zoom meeting. So I think it, um, it just applies <coughs> for you to have the interactions go on in Slack unless you've deliberately chosen to have a topic to continue discussing about it in Slack. But I feel like um, when you're already here in the Zoom call, you have a lot of updates and you're like, ah, you can just wait for the next Zoom call. So there is nothing really to take you to Slack to have to continue some conversations there unless maybe you you will deliberately choose two from here in the meeting. Gotcha. Okay, well, this is super helpful. Thank you for all of this. 
Um, Justin, you're, I see you typing in there. Do you want to make a comment? Yeah, actually, maybe I can share my screen. I know we're getting close to time, so I can try to make this really quick. Um, but again, this is an example from the Fedora project that I, I really like, um, that I've seen. So they have this, uh, work that, so they first, I guess, to start, there's a join SIG in Fedora. So it's a group of people in the community who uh, just help newcomers get involved and get set up and learn about the project and how to get involved. One of the things I like is they have this welcome to Fedora workflow. Um, so when someone comes into the project and you know they're overwhelmed or they're not quite sure where to begin, what will happen is someone, you know, say they get in touch with the join SIG or they, they talk to someone, they say hi in the chat channels, uh, and someone will open, ask them to make an account, which is probably not as applicable for us. But then they make these hello, hello world tickets for these people on a Git repository. So if I go and look here, there's this huge repository or this repository with all these different issues that are actually corresponding to all these different people who have uh, shown up and said they wanted to get involved in the project. And it's a couple of things like there's a couple of generic information that's kind of like a template. So like, hey, welcome to the project. Here's some links for that you can uh, check out on how to get involved and things that you should uh, maybe like helpful readings and things to know and when you're ready, you know, share an introduction on this ticket with us and let us know what you're interested in. Um, and this has been I've seen a, a really successful model that Fedora has done for bringing in uh, new people into the project and it makes it much more personal because you actually get matched up. Um, you know, different people in this join SIG can help out, or if you have questions, you comment in your personal ticket and someone will get back to you or answer. Sometimes people will get paired with another contributor, more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I thought this was a really creative approach and it's worked really well for Fedora. Um, you know, and you can see all these different tickets for people who have come in in the last few months. And so it's kind of like a personalized way. And they also have all these different labels here to kind of help them help the maintainers understand like how far along in their journey are they? You know, um, there, there's definitely a kind of a pretty uh, system here for how they manage it. But I like the idea of just having like, you know, every person gets their own personalized issue and they can ask any questions there. Um, and there's a whole community of folks who get notifications for those comments and can weigh in and answer those questions. So just wanted to share that as an interesting model for how the Fedora project is. Yeah, it, you, you put this in the minutes too, didn't you? I'm going to, I'll definitely yes. share this with Ruth and Elizabeth. And I also like the idea of, you know, how we have the newcomers channel on Slack, like actually a, a newcomers working group, <laughs> which is, yeah. what, you know, um, I think that the SIG and the working group are kind of the same, same thing. Um, yeah, but, um, just a submission, and we're, uh, we're actually out of time, but um, yeah, it took me almost a week. I was, um, I was trying to navigate all the information on the community website, mm -hmm. but a lot of information was thrown almost everywhere. So navigating it to really guide me on um, um, a guided process was really hard. And I ended up just getting lost because there was too much information to digest. And I was just like, let me just wait for uh, a newcomer's um, session so that um, I can ask those questions um, so that I, I can have those direct questions asked. But I, when I was navigating um, almost um, everything by myself, there was just too much to digest that I got lost and just froze and was like, OK, let me just wait and I'll inquire from okay. someone. Yeah. That makes sense. So I really like what you're saying, Enoch, and I like Kafaya your your points as well on the the Zoom, and then Justin as well. I think these are things that we can really easily pass on to Ruth. And yeah, and, and 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 I was discussing with Ruth, with Ruth yesterday and um, Elizabeth, and I was like, um, there are some internal terminologies you use, and um, like working groups was really something I hadn't understood until yeah. I started Zoom sessions. So I was like, what's a working group? What's a working group? What's a working gotcha. group? I was like, you know, I was expecting something like a wiki that explains some of those things that don't look obvious or that like um, only look obvious to the internal community, but for someone onboarding, they're actually not obvious so that uh, when they onboard, um, they're ready into the language and they can figure out um, some of those um, terminologies easily without right. being so confused. 
Right. Okay. This is wonderful. Thank you, everybody, for this. Um, we are at the end of our time, so always really great to see everybody. And sure. yeah, for the newcomers, please, you know, continue to come. We we love having <laughs> your input. <laughs> We're looking to to make improvements. That's for sure. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Until next time, we'll see you all later. Bye. Have a good one. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.